Welcome to Meet the Candidate with your host, Sulani Madsen. Meet the Candidate is your opportunity to see local candidates and hear about the experiences that have shaped their lives. Meet the Candidate is a nonpartisan community project brought to you by our friends at Greater Spokane Incorporated, Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, We Believe, We Vote, and Better Spokane. Now, here's Sulani. Okay, welcome to Meet the Candidate, and my guest by remote today is Dr. Art Coday, candidate for U.S. Senate. Welcome, Art. Hi, Sulani. Thanks for having me join you and your listeners today. Okay, this is a kind of the non-political kind of interview, just to let people get acquainted with who you are. Uh, and I always start with just asking for you to tell me about where you grew up and had your early education. Well, I grew up here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I was actually born in South Carolina, believe it or not. And my dad was in the Navy. He was an officer. And so we had to move on quite a bit when I was young due to his career. And uh, when I was about eight years old, we ended up out. And uh, I went to the public schools in Seattle for uh, a, a couple of years. And then we moved to Bellevue, where I spent most of my years growing up, went to the Bellevue Public Schools and uh, ultimately graduated from the Lakeside School in Seattle where I uh, spent my junior and senior year. I worked for a few years after that, actually four years after that, before I went to uh, college full time. During those years working, I went to night school at University College, studied math. I was working full time during the day and uh, studying at night and uh, uh, sort of burning the candle at both ends, as they say. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And then I transferred to the University of Washington where I got my bachelor's degree. We've had a, a large number of uh, military brat kids who, are, who have turned up as candidates this in the season. It's been an interesting trend. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I think that brings to a lot of kids if, with a military family is living in different places. What are some places that you have lived or traveled that have helped inform your view of the world? Well, I've lived in a number of different places here in the United States. I've never lived abroad. You know, some military families end up in Germany or, you know, other places out of the country, but not, not us. We were always here in the States, but uh, I've lived on both uh, the East Coast and the West Coast, most of my years, though, here in the Northwest. And, uh, you know, the places, as you go in different parts of the country, you really do see differences. Uh, uh, as an adult, I went back to Boston for medical school, and uh, you know, and uh, culture is just a little bit different than it is here in the Northwest. It's a little more formal, um, you know, uh, a little more traditional. Uh, but people are people, you know. That's what you really learn. Where people, people, and even though the customs traditions may be a little bit different, you know, people are all the same on the inside. Okay. One of the other questions I like to ask is about is like early jobs. First, we're we're talking the you know the grade school, junior high, high school kind of first jobs. Right, right. Well, I um, I started out at a young age. Uh, my parents managed to get me mowing the lawn and, and and doing most of the yard work on a pretty regular basis for the house, taking care of the dogs, uh, the cars, all of that stuff when I was about eight years old. Uh, right, really right after we arrived in Seattle. And uh, I took those skills and I started, you know, mowing lawns for neighbors, uh, doing landscaping. Um, I, um, I also uh, had a paper route. I delivered the Seattle Times. Um, and uh, then one summer when I was in high school, actually a couple summers, I worked for Rowan Northwest Decorators out of Seattle. We would set up for fairs and trade shows at the Seattle Center. Uh, we also would set up at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, um, so I did that. And, and then, of course, my favorite enterprise that I had as a kid was trapping rats. <laughs> we had a lot of uh, rats uh, in, here in the Northwest because there's a good climate and a good food supply, and uh, we had a lot of apple trees where we lived, so they would eat the apples, and my neighbors paid me very nicely to trap the rats for them. Well, that, that sort of leads right back into health and public health. and and your life after med school. So you, you graduated from med school, and where did you do your residency? 
Well, uh, I went to medical school at Harvard, and then I did residency training at uh, the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I did a couple of years of uh, research at Boston University, and then I did a couple of more years of residency at the Virginia Mason Hospital in Seattle. Which proves the uh, the contention that everybody's been making that we need more residency slots in the Pacific Northwest to bring doctors back here. And you've yes, been in private. Yes, you know, in fact. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say. I think we need more residency spots in general. I think that if you can believe this, that we actually need more doctors in the United States, not fewer. Our population is growing and aging, as well as the fact that the standard of care keeps going up as we're discovering better and better ways to take care of patients, but this requires more doctor man hours. So we have a relative shortage of doctors here in the Northwest and everywhere, in my opinion. Why don't you share with everyone a little bit about your, your practice? It's a little bit different, but you're filling some important niches. Yes. So I do home visits. Uh, I used to have an office in Linwood, but I'm a solo practitioner. I'm in general medical practice. Uh, I don't have any, any partners. And uh, I decided that uh, the best way for me to do that was really to, to get rid of the big financial overhead of running an office and just do home visits. Uh, so I do home visits for, for my patients, most of whom are elderly. Uh, and I also do some work in nursing homes. And then finally, I do some work for some of the firefighters throughout the state doing your annual physical evaluations. Okay. Now, what prompted you to volunteer to run for public office? Well, you know, this is a great question, and I think it goes back to something you said earlier in this show. You said you've seen a lot of uh, uh, kids of uh, military people running for office, and I think that there's a, a parallel between serving in the military and serving in public office, because in both cases, you're serving, and, and uh, you know, you're doing something, uh, trying to make a difference for the better, for, for, for the common good, for everybody, and uh, I, I think there's well there. I, I think it was my father's military career that really got me interested in public service. Okay. And I'd like to bring this into the that last question, which is just how do you see the duties of the elected office of U.S. Senator and why should voters choose you? Well, again, it's all about service. Now, one thing about the U.S. Senate that I think I perceive a little bit differently than perhaps many candidates and many sitting senators today, I think that the United States Senate should not be uh, an alternative version of the House of Representatives. In other words, the House of Representatives is elected by the people and it is designed to represent the people to the federal government, and the people should have such elected representation. The Senate was originally designed to represent the state governments to the federal government because every state needs more representation to the government so that it can accomplish important things that require federal cooperation like interstate highways and uh, you know major infrastructure projects, uh, how to handle things like military bases, um, and, and how to clean up Hanford. Th this, these are things that require uh, cooperation. So, the, my role as a senator would be to try and work with our state legislature and governor to figure out what our priorities are here in Washington. And then when I go to the Senate in Washington, D.C., to advocate for what we need here in our state. And this is sort of a nonpartisan way of representing Washington state and its people to our federal government. Okay. And the last part of that question is, why sh are you the best candidate for U.S. Senate? Well... A number of reasons. I think one of them is what I just said, because I'm bringing a different vision uh, to somebody who's elected by the people and who knows what their priorities are in Washington, in Washington D.C. Maybe they're what their party bosses tell them. Maybe they're what the lobbyists tell them. I don't really know. But I know they're not the priorities of the state legislature. Uh, because our senators, according to my sources, I've met with the state legislature on a formal basis for, for many years, if ever. Uh, so that's going to be fundamentally different, and I think it's going to make me a much better senator, less partisan, more business, Bus business of Washington State and its people, number one. Number two, 
Healthcare is a huge thing. The federal government is deeply involved in healthcare, as we all know, with Medicare, Medicaid, the VA system, and the overall regulation of healthcare in the private markets as well. And I think as a physician, I spent most of my career seeing seniors and disabled people through the Medicare and Medicaid programs and taking care of uninsured patients. I think I'm in a very good position to understand the needs of the public with regard to federal involvement in healthcare. I think that I can make healthcare less costly and more user-friendly for people. Okay, that's a good last pitch, and I appreciate you making time to join us today. Good Thank you, Sulani. I like being on your show. Candidate. Spokane Talks thanks our community-minded partners, Greater Spokane Incorporated, the Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, We Believe We Vote, and Better Spokane for helping make Meet the Candidate possible.